Hi everyone, this is Rob with the UMass Architecture and Design Digital Fabrication Lab. Today we're going to go through a quick tutorial on how to load a knowledge base uh, to mill your screens that you create, you've created for Design 3. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, if your screen uh, should look something like this, you know, you've got um, at least three panels in the X direction, at least four in the Y direction, and it should be arranged something like this on the, on the screen. So here's my module. I'm going to go ahead and hide that, that's the first step. Okay, so now we're working in RhinoCam, and uh, so to load the RhinoCam tools, you're going to go up here to RhinoCam and go into Machining Operations Browser. That'll bring up this menu over here, um, like so. And uh, so in the beginning, you're going to see there's not really much in here. So what we need to do is we need to load in what are called a knowledge base. Um, so that's essentially just a, a setup uh, so that you're not having to pick all the settings yourself and uh, just streamline, streamlines the process and makes it a lot quicker. So you're going to go up here to this little tab here and you're going to click load knowledge base. We'll have uploaded this to the blog. Uh, this is, it'll be D3 arc screens knowledge base. Go ahead and open that. And you'll see that you'll now have, now have a few more options over in this menu here. One will say horizontal finishing, the other one will say parallel finishing. So we're going to set up both of these really quickly, and then when you guys are creating your screens, you'll pick one, and you're going to optimize it so that it's fast enough um, within a specific time frame, and then you're going to post the file so that uh, it's in a language that the router can read, and then you guys are going to each have a chance to come and route your screen on the CNC router. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do here is to create what's called a region. And a region is an area that defines where the machine is going to act. So to do that, you need to create a rectangle that's going to go around your entire object. So come over here to rectangle. And it needs to sit right on the surface, uh, right, at, right on the construction plane. So it's 0, 0. But first, I'm just going to draw it on the base here, on the bottom. And then I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to move it vertically. So that now you can see it's resting right on the construction plane above my object, which is resting entirely below the construction plane. It's really important that you have it set up like this. OK, so this is my region. Now what I'm going to do is come over to horizontal finishing. We'll do that one first and double click on it. Oop, uh, sorry. Double click on horizontal roughing. It'll ask you to select the drive containment region. And that's that curve that you just, just created. So you're going to uh, click on Select Drive Containment Region, then click on your curve, and then you'll see this. It says Select Objects, hit right mouse button to end, hit enter. Okay, now I already have this preset up for you, including all the tools and everything. Uh, so you're not going to really have to change any of this stuff. With roughing, it's generally pretty straightforward. So we're going to click Generate. And it's going to take a second. Okay, so now you can see these blue lines here. These are the, uh, these are the tool paths that the tool is going to follow to cut out your screen. Okay, so now we're going to double click on the next one, horizontal re-roughing. Oh, excuse me. Uh, first, we're going to have to go to simulate. And you're going to come down here, so this simulate tab, come down to play. Make sure that horizontal roughing is highlighted and click play. And now you'll see that it's cut out of your stock. Oop, um, which hopefully, as long as everything is hidden, should be uh, just the outline area. If it's not, so you need to make sure that everything is hidden. And if it's not, just quickly, I'm going to go back. So go to Program. And to set your stock, you're going to click on Stock. And then go to Box Stock. And that should just select only your screen. The only the, if that's the only thing on the, uh, in your model, then it'll just select that. So you go ahead and do that. And click OK. Okay, so again, we're going to uh, go here, go to Simulate, and click Play. And so now you can see what that horizontal roughing process is doing. Okay, now we're going to go to this one, which says Horizontal Re-Roughing, which is actually a finishing pass. We're going to go ahead and click that. And you know, need to be in the, oops, need to be in the Program tab here to do that. So to set up anything, you need to be in the Program tab. Okay, um, I can select that curve, double-click Horizontal Re-Roughing. I'm going to have to select it again, select my curve, hit enter just like before. Again, I have everything pretty much pre-set up, so I'm just going to click Generate. Give it a second here to load.
Okay, now so you can see here what that's done is created a stepped sort of appearance on your uh, series of tool paths on your on your screen here. Uh, so again, if I go to simulate and I um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and center it in my screen, click play. And you can see now it's going through and cutting out all of those different areas. And uh, if I go down here, I can turn off the toolpaths, and you can see what the result is going to look like now. It's got a nice, clean, stepped look to it, and it'll cut out the same shape as your original object, but with a little bit of surface texture. Okay, so then the final step is going to be what's called uh, profiling, and again, we're going to need to select our region. So um, double click on two, half, two and a half axis profiling over here, and you're going to select your curve. Hit enter. And again, I have everything set up for you, so you're just going to click Generate. And uh, if I turn my toolpath visibility back on down here, you can see that's now cutting around the outside. Okay, so now if I go here and click on it and go to Simulate and click Play, you can see now it's just cutting around the outside. And what that's going to do is cut out your screen so that it's a it's an, a single object. It's not uh, a part of a of your larger stock. Okay, so that's the first one. That's horizontal finishing. Let's go ahead and do parallel finishing. Okay, so you guys know the routine. Double click on horizontal roughing, select the drive containment region, hit enter, and then click generate. It's the exact same operation as in horizontal finishing. It's a real quick uh, roughing process. Okay, parallel finishing, uh, rather than horizontal finishing, which kind of goes in a topographical way, as in uh, stepping down some specific amount, parallel finishing steps over some specific amount. So the, so the paths go across your surface like this, or in the other direction like this. Okay, so again, we're going to double click on it, select the drive containment region, and hit enter. And to check the default, you can just uh, go ahead and click generate. Okay, so now you can see there's tool paths all along the surface there. I'm going to go ahead and while we're at it, just set up that final two and a half axis profiling. Select the curve, click enter, hit generate. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's go ahead and we'll click on this whole setup, parallel finishing, and we'll simulate the whole thing. Now what it's doing, hold on one second. So uh, if you decide to do this, you're going to need to drag parallel finishing up above horizontal finishing. That will give you a more accurate uh, more accurate idea of what it's actually going to look like. Otherwise, it assumes that you're doing the horizontal finishing and then doing the parallel finishing. But actually, you're doing one or the other. And so that's going to be a decision that you make based on the appearance that you're looking for. and um, you'll see in one second the the look is very different okay so I'm gonna turn off my toolpath visibility and now you can see it's kind of a smoother finish maybe but it's um, it's not as uh, as accurate on the steep areas and you can see that here um, you end up with some some marks there, but in general, it's a smooth, a very smooth finish. Uh, but it, is a, it doesn't show the same topography as the horizontal finishing. Okay, so now what you're going to do? Let's say that we want to do parallel finishing. Um, what do you need to do first? Is you need to make sure that it's not going to take too long. So you guys each have a 15 minute slot. So you're going to right click on parallel finishing and go to information. Here it'll tell you the total time. So here it says 7.85 minutes. That's totally okay. So if you have, if it reads anything under fi under 15, you're totally fine. Click OK. And uh, so let's try again for a horizontal finishing because I have a feeling this one's going to take a little bit longer. Yep. So now you can see it says that this one's going to take 20 minutes and 32 seconds, and that's because uh, there it's just a more complicated set of tool paths. So it just takes a little bit longer. So, but that doesn't mean that you can't use this one. You just need to adjust the settings so that things go a little bit quicker. And if I right click on this again and go to information, you can see almost all of the time is in that horizontal re-roughing pass. And so we're going to go ahead and quicken that up. So there's a couple different things that we can do there. I'm going to double click on horizontal re-roughing. 
Okay, so now most of these settings in here you guys are not going to be touching. But there are a couple that you can. Okay, so the first one is the step over control. So right now, my step over is set to 75% of the tool diameter. But to speed things up, I can go to 95%. So it's going to take off almost entirely new material every single pass. That'll save a little bit of time. I can also go to cut levels, and right now it's set to 25% of the tool diameter, which is 1 16th of an inch, uh, since the, uh, the tool that you're going to be using for this pass is a quarter inch blade. So a 16th of an inch is pretty small. Let's go to an eighth of an inch, so that would be a 50% uh, step down. And so that's, that's the amount that it's going to step down per, per level. Then I click Generate. And let's see how we're doing on time. There we go. So now I'm down to 10 minutes and 49, uh, 10 minute, 10.49 minutes, uh, which is totally acceptable. Okay, so, uh, and let's just go ahead and you can see the difference here pretty quickly. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move horizontal finishing back up to the top here. So just click and drag it. And I'm going to simulate it again. And let's just see how that looks now. So you can see it's a much more coarse step, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It actually looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, so I think that's going to be acceptable. Okay, it's definitely a little bit more coarse, but you know you can uh, you can make those decisions. Okay, so um, finally we need to go ahead and uh, and document our settings here so that uh, you have an idea of, of what all of the steps are and, and also you can submit them to me for checking so that I can take a look at them. So to do that you're going to go to horizontal finishing here and you're going to go to shop documentation. You can save it anywhere, I'll just put it on my desktop and it'll save as shop documentation video sample screen or whatever, you, whatever your file is called. Save it And it'll bring up this document here, which has all the information. It has the two different tools that you're going to be using. It has their feed rates, and um, and it has each of the steps down along here. So that way we can just go through. You're going to bring this to your uh, to the any milling uh, session that you have, and uh, it'll help us to to document what's going on. Okay, so you can close that. It's just sitting on your desktop there. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, horizontal finishing. Let's just say I want to do this one. And what we're going to do is called posting. So we're going to post this document. And that means that we're, we're going to send it to the router language. It makes it a lot easier for the router to read. So click post. Right click on horizontal finishing. Click post. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And uh, I'll just save it with the default name. And click post. So now it's going to bring up this uh, notepad, and this is the file format. This is what you're looking for. You can close that, and if I go to my desktop, you'll see that I now have my file hidden away on here somewhere. And now it's seeing it. Here we go. So that's it. And then the the um, file type is a .nc. An NC file is a CNC router uh, language file. So we're gonna, you're gonna post that, and then you're also, so you're gonna post, you're gonna put that into onto my uh, flash drive during our evening session. You're also going to give me your Rhino file, and we're gonna compile all of the all of the documents into into a series into a series of sessions. And we're gonna cut multiple projects at once, and so. Um, so that's actually it for today. So that's how to set up your file, uh, how to load a knowledge base, how to set the region and adjust certain settings so that you can get the timing that you need, how to document your process, and how to post it uh, as a file to the router language that the CNC router understands. OK, so um, that's it. And um, this has been Rob for the Digital Fabrication Lab at UMass Amherst. And have a nice day.